This video was produced to illustrate the importance of hoppers in a feeding system. For this demonstration, we will be using the smallest Cintron feeder that we produce. What you will see holds true for any size feeder. FMC used application expertise along with physical testing to produce this manual and video working with hoppers. We will show you what FMC considers an ideal hopper along with other commonly used hoppers to illustrate the advantages and disadvantages of each. First, here we have the ideal hopper. As you can see, the throat is about 0.6 of the gate height. The front wall is flatter than the rear wall of the hopper by 5 degrees. See the material is active in the center area, but also moves faster in the rear of the hopper than it does in the front of the hopper. This condition aids in reducing buildup in the hopper and on the trough fan. The results with these conditions are uniform flow pattern, maximum capacity, reduced material load on a feeder. This is the acceptable hopper where the throat is increased to the gate height. See the material moving from the center and also the material is moving at the rear wall of the hopper cleaning the feeder and creating almost uniform flow. This gives about the same characteristics as the ideal hopper, but more material is reporting to the pan, causing increased feeder size, reduced capacity, and non-uniform flow patterns. This hopper has excess throat, where the throat is increased to more than the gate height. See the material moving from the center but the material is not moving at the rear wall of the hopper, which can cause buildup in the hopper and on the feeder. This condition causes increased feeder size, even more reduced capacity, non-uniform flow patterns, and an increase in material load, which could possibly collapse the suspension coil springs. Here we have a hopper with a flat front wall and rear wall. See the material in the hopper move from the center only? Both the rear and front walls are not moving much material. This condition causes reduced material flow, rat holing, sticking and buildup inside the hopper, dormant material in the hopper and on the inlet side of the feeder, and increased material load on the feeder. Now, here is a hopper with a flat front wall and the throat and the gate height are equal. See how the rear wall is moving material and the front is staying dormant? Also, there is a decrease in the material height at the discharge of the feeder. This condition causes increased material load, increased feeder size, non-uniform flow patterns, and decreased capacity. Here is the reverse, flat rear wall. See how the material is active in the center and in the front? This condition causes buildup on the trough pan and in the hopper, non-uniform flow patterns, decreased capacity, and reduced material depth at the discharge. Now let's look at the vertical front and rear walls. Same as a tubular inlet. See how the front wall of the hopper is moving material and the rear wall is not moving material? This condition causes even more buildup on the trough pan and in the hopper, non-uniform flow patterns, decreased capacity, reduced depth at discharge, severe neck down, a greater amount of material reporting to the pan, and a larger feeder is required. Here is a vertical front wall and a flat rear wall to the hopper. See the same characteristics as the vertical front and rear wall, only worse? Notice the material on the rear wall. This condition causes even more buildup on the trough pan and in the hopper, non-uniform flow patterns, decreased capacity, reduced depth at discharge, severe neck down, a greater amount of material reporting to the pan, 
and a larger feeder is required. Here is the reverse of the last, vertical rear wall and flat front wall. See the reduced bed depth? This condition causes high head loads, reduced bed depth, increased material load, and a larger feeder is required. In summary, here is the ideal hopper. The throat is about 0.6 of the gate height. The front wall is flatter than the rear wall of the hopper by 5 degrees. See the material is active in the center area, but is also faster moving in the rear of the hopper than the front. The hopper should be considered in the design phase of a feeding system to produce the most efficient and cost-effective combination. With the correct hopper for your material, you can maximize feeder capacity, maximize material velocity, maximize material depth, optimize feeder size, reduce potential for material buildup at the inlet and in the hopper, reduce potential for spillage at the back and sides, and reduce material loads on the feeder. For the best solution for your feeding system, contact FMC to speak to an application specialist.